All right, so in the last video, uh, we did example one with integration by parts, and we talked about this rule, uh, liate, or however you pronounce that, uh, this rule for choosing u. So remember, when you do integration by parts, integral of u dv minus, the, uh, excuse me, equals uv minus the integral of v du, uh, and you want to choose u, okay? So this is how you choose u, go down this list, um, choose u to be the first thing that appears. Anyway, we talked about that uh, in detail in the previous video. Um, and then remember, so when you choose u, uh, so in this case u is uh, x, so then dv is automatically everything else. So in this case dv was e to the x dx. Okay. Um, and then remember, how do we get v? We integrate dv. So when you integrate this, you ought to have an arbitrary constant. But remember we said for integration by parts, you can just forget about the arbitrary constant here. Okay, when you get v from dv, you can just forget about that arbitrary constant. Okay. And we wanted to know why is it okay to do that? And the short answer was because it's going to cancel out anyway and it doesn't matter. So let's go through example one again and see what if we have v plus a constant, okay? What if we add an arbitrary constant to this and see um, is that really going to work out to be the same thing? Okay, so what we're going to do is go through this specific example, show that it works, and then we'll do it uh, with the general formula and show that it still works, okay? Because with the specific example, it might look like, oh, well, it's simple enough that it works, but it's actually true in general um, if you use this formula. If you have v plus a constant instead of just v, uh, it'll still cancel out. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, work through the details here. So integral of u dv equals u times, now let's say v plus a constant. Okay, so we're adding the constant to v, so that whole thing has to be multiplied by u, so be careful of that. So instead of v, we're doing v plus a constant, so u is multiplied by all of that. So watch out for that. Then minus the integral of v plus a constant du. Okay, and du is just dx, because uh, u is x. So remember, if u is x, then du is just dx. Okay? So anyway, let's go ahead and simplify this. So distribute the x, so that's x e to the x plus constant times x, minus, um, if we split this integral up into two, what's going to happen? Well, we can think of this as, uh, if we put square brackets around here, so that's going to be minus, um, split this guy up into two, so that's integral of e to the x dx, plus integral of c dx, okay? and then we have these brackets here. But if we want to drop the brackets, uh, then we have to distribute the minus sign. Okay, so if we drop the brackets here, uh, so drop these, and drop these guys here, then this plus becomes a minus. Okay, so watch out for that. Um, that uh, is very important there. So then what happens here, uh, x <coughs> e to the x uh, plus cx, okay, plus cx, uh, minus, if we integrate e to the x, what do we get? e to the x plus some other arbitrary constant, so we'll call it c1, because we're already using c, so we have to use c1 now, because right? these may be different constants, uh, we don't know. Minus, now what if we integrate an arbitrary constant? Well, what's the integral of like uh, 2 dx? Well, if you just integrate 2, uh, then you get 2x plus, you know, some arbitrary constant, right? So plus const. Um, okay, so the integral of 2 is 2x plus a constant, so the integral of c and the integral of any constant is just that constant times x, so this is going to be minus uh, cx okay, plus some other arbitrary constant, c2. Why c2? Well, because c1 is already being used, and so c. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, hey, uh, minus sign on the integral, should that be minus? And since this minus sign is here, shouldn't this also be minus? Well, technically, yeah, but uh, just arbitrary constant. So if you subtract an arbitrary constant, it's the exact same thing as adding a different arbitrary constant. And since plus signs, in general, we like those better than we like minus signs, um, let's just say plus arbitrary constant, okay? So yeah, technically, minus the whole integral, so it's really minus this entire thing here. But adding and subtracting an arbitrary constant, it doesn't make a difference, because it's just an arbitrary constant we don't know, okay? Now over here, it does matter because we have the x on it, okay? But this c2 is just an arbitrary constant, so we could say plus c2, minus c2, it does not matter at all. But this, we have to be careful because of the x on it, okay? With the c, c and the x. So if there's a variable on it, yeah, it matters. But if it's just a constant floating around by itself, like c1 and c2, then it doesn't matter. It could be plus, could be minus. Uh, we don't care, because it's arbitrary. Okay? If you add an arbitrary constant, it's the same thing as subtracting another arbitrary constant. So plus, minus, all the same. Anyway, um, just some subtle details there. So what's next? x e to the x plus cx, blah, 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 minus cx. So notice uh, these cancel here, plus cx, minus cx. So they do cancel. That's great. What are we left with? x e to the x um, minus e to the x plus c1 plus c2 
which is the exact same thing as saying x e to the x minus e to the x plus some other arbitrary constant we'll call c3. Okay, why is that? Well, c1 is an arbitrary constant. c2 is an arbitrary constant. If you add two arbitrary constants, what do you get? Another arbitrary constant. Okay? So um, this is the exact same answer we got when we did example one of the last video. Now, of course, it looks different because we have c3 instead of just c, but that doesn't matter at all. Okay, it doesn't matter what we call the arbitrary constant in the end. Um, all that matters is the answer is x e to the x minus e to the x plus some arbitrary constant. Okay. So now you might be thinking, well, hey, didn't that just work out uh, as a coincidence because we just have x here and x, it makes things kind of simple, you know, x times uh, c. And then when we integrate c over here, we just get the x again. So wouldn't that change if this were something different? Um, well, you know, it's reasonable to think that because it does keep it kind of simple like this, right? But it's actually uh, not true. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out in general. Okay, so now we're going to do this exact same thing, but we're going to do it uh, in general and not just with this specific example here. So let's go ahead and go through this exact same thing. So first, let's recap what we did real quick. Um, so the integration by parts formula says do it like this, uv, <coughs> uh, the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And we said, well, hey, shouldn't we have v plus a constant? Because we have to integrate, uh, do an indefinite integral to get v. So then we worked through that and we saw, oh, well, if we have an arbitrary constant there, then it works out to be the same thing anyway. So now what we're going to do, so basically what we did is we replaced v with v plus c in this formula. Replace v with v plus c. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the general formula and not just with specific uh, functions. Okay? So replace v with v plus c. Replace v with v plus c. Now we're going to do that in this formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see that in general, it really does work out to be the same thing. Now, it will be kind of messy with the constants, but that's okay. Um, it's good to see these kind of things here. So let's, uh, let's try the green. So integral of u dv equals a u times, so I'm going to replace v with v plus a constant. Okay, so same formula, but I'm replacing v with v plus a constant just like we did with the specific example we just looked at. Okay. <clears throat> All right then. Now let's go ahead and uh, distribute, simplify, and everything like that. So this is going to be uv plus cu minus the integral of uh, v du plus the integral of c du. Okay. And again, be very careful because we do have these brackets here. So uh, it'll be like this, right? So then if you, want to if you want to drop these brackets right here, you've got to distribute the minus sign. So let's go ahead and drop these red brackets over here. Okay. And then uh, this plus becomes a minus. Okay. Uh, okay. So and we can drop these up here because we don't really need those up there anyway. All right, now that's that. So again, just be very careful with the minus signs uh, where you need to. All right. So let's keep going with this. So this is going to be uh, uv. Okay, well, before we continue, um, remember du, so if we have a function u of x, there's a derivative u prime of x and a differential du equals u prime of x dx, right? Um, oops, provided the derivative exists. So u of x, there's a derivative if it exists, u prime, and the differential du is u prime of x dx. So remember, differentials there are like this. So this du, what I want to do is replace that with, uh, so du is the same thing as u prime of x dx. So I'm going to replace this guy with that, okay? Um, and I'll also replace this u with the u of x. But everywhere else, I'll just leave it the same because it doesn't matter. Now, if you really want to be consistent, uh, it's not really necessary here, but you could say u of x, v of x, and then v of x, uh, u prime of x, dx. But you don't really have to do that because these aren't really that important uh, yet. So that's just u, v plus c. So I'm going to say u of x minus the integral of v du. And then what I want to do is say minus. So remember, uh, du is the same thing as uh, u prime of x, dx. Now, what I also want to do is pull out this arbitrary constant. Okay, I want to pull out this arbitrary constant. So remember, constants can just be pulled out of integrals. So what this is going to do is become uh, c times the integral of, remember, du is the same thing as u prime of x dx. Okay, so that's what's going on there. All right, now what happens? So now this is uh, uv plus c times u of x minus the integral of v du minus, now this is going to be c times uh, when we integrate u prime of x dx, what do we get? We get u of x plus some arbitrary constant, which I'm going to call c1. Why am I calling it c1? Because c is already being taken. Okay? This arbitrary constant, we don't know. It's probably different from this arbitrary constant, so we have to be very careful about that. Right? 
and what's this arbitrary constant c? That's the one we're adding to v. So remember, we get v by integrating dv, and since that's indefinite, then we think, oh, there must be an arbitrary constant. And remember, what we're doing now is showing that it doesn't matter about this arbitrary constant up here. Okay. All right, anyway, um, so let's continue with this. So this is uh, uv plus c times u of x minus the integral of v du minus, now let's distribute the c. So this is minus c u of x and then uh, minus c c1. Okay, now we get to some subtle details I want to point out. C is an arbitrary constant. C1 is another arbitrary constant. So subtracting, or sorry, if you multiply them together, uh, you're going to get another arbitrary constant. So C C1 is just some big arbitrary constant here. So we can call that whole thing C2 if we want. Okay. So again, if you multiply two arbitrary constants, you just get another arbitrary constant. And again, we said it earlier in the video, subtracting an arbitrary constant, same exact thing as adding another arbitrary constant. So since it's just an arbitrary constant, we don't know anything about it. All we know is it's a constant, it's arbitrary, so we can just say plus C2 to keep things simple. Because again, we like plus signs more than we like minus signs, right? So we can do that. But again, just some subtle details there, doesn't really matter. Um, but this minus, this has to stay a minus because of the u of x, okay? It has the u on it, so we have to be very careful, okay? So we can't say plus here. Even though c is arbitrary, it's being multiplied by this function u, okay? And the sign does matter on the function u, but for the arbitrary constants just floating around by themselves, it doesn't matter. Okay, so again, just some subtle details there, I just want to point those out. Um, anyway, what happens now? Uh, now what happens is blah, 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 plus c times u of x, blah, 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 minus c times u of x. Well, hey, that's good. These guys cancel. Okay. And what are we left with? Uh, uv minus the integral of v du plus some arbitrary constant c2. Well, guess what? Uh, that's exactly the same thing as uv minus the integral of v du with no arbitrary constant. Why is that? That might seem kind of strange, and you know, it feels kind of strange at first, but notice uh, the integral of v du, when we integrate that, we're going to get another arbitrary constant. And when we have that arbitrary constant, it's just going to be absorbed in together with this arbitrary constant here. So we can, for we can totally forget about this arbitrary constant because we're going to get another one anyway when we uh, evaluate this integral. Okay? So again, if you have two arbitrary constants added, uh, being added or subtracted, or multiplied or divided, um, you're just going to get another arbitrary constant. So you can squish them all together into one big old arbitrary constant. Just like we did with minus c, c1, we squish that together into plus c2, right? Well here, this, uh, there's another arbitrary constant kind of lurking in the background with this integral of v du. So when we integrate this, um, we're going to get another arbitrary constant uh, that absorbs uh, in with this one here, okay? So that's why we don't need to write this arbitrary constant because it'll already be taken care of for us when we do this here. Okay, so I know that might seem kind of strange, but that's really arbitrary constants are just kind of nice like that. Um, they just work out like that. So arbitrary constants, they kind of uh, swallow other arbitrary constants. So the constant we get from here is going to uh, kind of devour this constant here, and they're going to switch together into one constant. So we can just forget about this one. Totally ignore it. Uh, it doesn't help us at all. It doesn't do anything uh, for us. It doesn't hurt us, though. You know, it's not wrong to have it. It's just totally unnecessary, and it's the, really the exact same thing as just having this. Okay. So that's how arbitrary constants work. Well, hey, uh, what do we end up with here? Um, integral of u dv equals big ol' mess with arbitrary constants, blah, 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 equals uh, uv minus the integral of v du. So even if we have an arbitrary constant on v, okay, if we do v plus an arbitrary constant, uh, the formula works out to be exactly the same thing. Okay, so that's why when we choose uh, u, then we have dv automatically is everything else we talked about in the previous video. And then we integrate dv to get v. Okay, so this is why we don't do v plus an arbitrary constant, because it doesn't matter. It cancels anyway. Okay, so this is just sort of an explanation of that. So when you do integration by parts, you get v from dv. Uh, don't, have the, uh, don't put the arbitrary constant on there, because it doesn't matter anyway. So that's just an explanation of that, and um, some more examples coming up in the next few videos.